I want to just give you a little overview of what's going to be on the test on Thursday, October 15th. Uh, it will be during class time, uh, and you might need a little more time than that, but I, would, I wouldn't count on that as you should have plenty. Um, so I put your review packet on Google Classroom with the answers. And I encourage you to check that out because they're there. Don't just copy. Uh, make sure you try it and use it really as an answer key. Go do your work, do a check, uh, and see. I put the how-to up there. Um, so let's take a look at that, and I'll go through it to give some explanation of the math problems. Um, let me share my screen. Um, most of it's going to be um, description, uh, some writing. There will be a few math problems. So let's take a look and let me just give you a quick overview. Uh, we started the unit with um, matter. And when you see this, when you see OYO, OYO, that means on your own. That means I am not going to go back over it. That's something that I believe you should do and get down. It's not too terrible uh, of descriptions, and I think that's something you guys can handle. And with the descriptions are there, I asked you to make some slideshows of that. So go back and review your slide presentations for matter. Um, but really, uh, if it's on this sheet, it's likely going to be on the test. Uh, and if it's not on this sheet, it's not going to be on the test. I'm not going to ask you something out of the blue, like, oh my gosh, there's no surprise, like, hey, now, I might ask you to think and process some things and compare and contrast, which I think is fair, um, but really use this as the foundation for what's going to be on the test. So the matter review part one, and this is all on your review packet, um, is on your own. States of matter um, is OYO. That's on your own. Uh, the, the, really, this whole first page, you can draw pictures of solids, liquids, and gases. Um, that's on your own. Uh, you know, the particle pictures that are out there, I ask you to make slides of solid with the gas. If you don't have that yet, go out and look them up. There's what's called particle pictures of what these should look like. Uh, then we get into the idea of kind of classification of matter. Um, one thing I want to point out, just review. Um, if you didn't catch it the first time, we'll, we'll review again. Uh, a pure substance, the two things. So we're going to look at element, compound, and mixture. Pure substances are only elements. And as a reminder, there's approximately 118 of those from the periodic table. So pure substances, elements, really there's only one thing um, that says 118, just so you know. And then compounds can also be pure. Like for example, a compound, water. You can have pure water, uh, salt, pure salt. Um, even though it's made up of two different elements, if I had a beaker of salt, the only thing in that beaker would be salt. Uh, Sugar, C12, H22, O11 would be pure substances. So elements, compounds can be pure substances. Mixtures cannot be pure substances because they're made up of two or more things. So if you have a raisin brand cereal, right? You have the raisins and then you have the flakes. So that would actually be a heterogeneous mixture. Um, an example of homogeneous mixture might be salt water. Go to the ocean, pick a cup up. You can't tell that you can look at it. You don't know it's salt water um, versus regular water. So it's a mixture. Um, and the salt's dissolved in there. Sugar water um, would be a mixture. Uh, so mixtures can't be pure substances. And you have either homogeneous, I'm going to let it let you put homogeneous versus heterogeneous. Okay. So those are on your own. Let's look at the next page. Quick review, again, this is a way for you to visualize elements, compounds, and mixtures um, in a visual format. Put down here. So I'll let you decide. I'm not gonna put an answer key up to this one. You're on your own for that. You should be able to decide what's there for eight and nine. Um, as I put on the review packet, eight and nine, make up your own examples. Use whatever shape you want to to try to get straight in your own brain um, what would constitute an element in number eight 
and a compound in number nine. Don't use the ones up above, make up your own. Um, and then this, I'm just gonna tell you right now, hint, 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 big hint coming, woo, woo, spoiler alert. Um, this would be a great test question. Just saying, right? Um, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that would be a great test question um, uh, as you have that. All right. So that's the kind of the on your own. Then we get into some of the math, the numerical, the quantitative type of questions. Um, we took a quiz on scientific notation. And so uh, the answers are on the, I'm not going to do all of these just because I don't want this video to be crazy long. Just check your answers on this um, from what's on the sheet already on the uh, review guide that's on Classroom. They, I have the answers. Again, check your answers to this. They're there. Um, moving the decimal to the left or to the right based on whether it's a positive or negative. Uh, same thing down here. Just check your answers. If you need help, put them in the calculator. Um, you just can't get it. Um, I can help you when you're taking your uh, your test on Thursday. All right, so what I really want to make sure you've got down is the um, how to do the conversions. You may use your mole maps. Go find that on the classroom. I will try to package everything in like a test information. Uh, segment of classroom. So the first thing you go into, make sure you're going to that classroom tab. Again, some of you are still going to the stream. So Mr. Hines, I can't find things. Go to the classroom tab at the top. Um, just keep saying that over and over and over again. Okay. Again, to get started with these, you're going to look for your given. You're going to look for your wanted. I know you're ready to move on from this. I've heard this a thousand times. Um, so in this case, it's 4.7 moles of gold, set your brackets up. As a reminder, whatever's on top in the given, always start with the given, goes in the bottom. And right now the number one goes with mole. If you have another number next to the word mole, you're doing something incorrect, right? The only number that should be next to the word mole is one. If you see the word mole there, don't put 6.02 times 10 to 23rd, because then you're starting to count things right down there. Now, up the top here, I want it, what I want it is particles. So I'm gonna put a P there for particles. How many particles are in a mole? If I said 12, that would be a dozen, not a mole. There's a lot because atoms are so small. So I've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. More atoms uh, than stars up in the sky, right? So 4.7, then multiply across the top. This is like multiplying fractions. I showed some people the other day when you're taking your quiz, if you have, and this is an example, nothing to do with this problem. If you have three fourths, times two thirds, this is what we're doing with these conversions. You would multiply the numerators, you would multiply the denominators, you would get answers. So I would have six twelfths, right? So I multiply top, multiply the bottom. Now it's six divided by 12, so my answer would come out to 0 0.5 on that one. Same thing, we're gonna multiply across the top, get an answer. Multiply across the bottom, get an answer, cross our units out. Moles cancels out with moles in this case, and I'm left with particles of gold. Um, and the answer is on the sheet, but in this case, it comes out to uh, 2.83 times 10 to the 24th particles. Okay. You're on your own for number two. Number two is the same way. You just flip in the conversion factor, so you need to check that. On the answer key, check your process, check your steps. Now these next ones that I did, I did them on purpose this way that I gave you three substances and then uh, finding the molar mass and then the three substances molar masses get used down below in six, seven, eight. So number three corresponds to number six, number four corresponds to number seven and number five, number eight. So five, the, the, don't redo the math on these. Um, the molar masses are in there. I'm just gonna do magnesium chloride. The rest of them you can figure out to do um, the other way. So when I do the magnesium chloride, calculate the, in this case, it's 
molar mass. Mg, Cl is what it's made of. So for Mg, I go to the periodic table. I find out its atomic mass is 24.31. This tells me that I have 1 Mg and 2 Cl. So I've got 1 Mg. That's going to equal 24.31 grams per mole on that one. The chlorine atomic mass is 35.45. But in this case, that subscript two, remember, only goes to the chlorine. So there's two of them. That comes out to 70.90. So the molar mass is roughly for magnesium chloride is 95.21 grams per mole. That means 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride is equal to one mole. All right, um, so that's number three. Number four and number five are gonna be the same thing. Just as a quick review, in number four, you have one Na, one H, one C, and then three O's. In barium hydroxide, you have one Ba. This two is in this parentheses. Remember, that tells me I have two, these things called hydroxides, which means I'm gonna have, so this is one Ba, but I have two O's and I have two H's. So they double them up. So that's going to be BA times one, whatever its mass is. It's going to be oxygen times two, and it's going to be hydrogen times two. And then you add those up to get the molar mass. The answers are shown and how to on the answer key that I put in the classroom. All right, let's remember that that molar mass of Magnesium chloride is 95.21. We'll use that a couple of times. In this case, my given is moles of magnesium chloride. My wanted is grams. So I'm going from moles to grams. If you're using the mole map, in this case, I'm starting, you know, we had the heart that said we love moles. So in this case, I'm going from moles to grams. Um, so it would be one mole over the molar mass is the conversion for that. That's the direction we're going on the mole map. And I encourage you to use that um, just to help you uh, get started. Because we're going to use this all year. Like when we start doing reactions, you're gonna to need to understand how to convert moles and grams and particles. Start with our given always 3.7 moles of MgCl2. You don't have to write the word of, that's 0.7. Just, I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna rewrite it just because it's yucky. You heard me, I said yucky. All right, so 3.7 moles make my bracket so I can figure out what comes next. Whatever's on top in the first fraction goes in the bottom of the second one. One goes with moles, MgCl2. Bring down our molar mass from what we calculated before because I need grams of MgCl2. What did I say it was? I think it's 95-ish, right? So 95.21 from up above in number three. 95.21 grams. Multiply across the top, get an answer. Multiply across the bottom, get an answer. And this one comes out to 3.7 times 95. So if it was one mole, it'd be three, I'm sorry. If it was one mole, it would be 95.21 grams. But I don't have just one mole. I have 3.7 moles. So it's going to be three times, almost four times, whatever the molar mass is, which is 95, which comes out to 352.28 grams. Now you might be rounding a little bit differently off the periodic table. You might round in your calculation a little bit differently. You should be close to this number. I'll give a little bit of leeway on the test in terms of one side or another. You know, if, if it's 352 and you have 9,000, I'm not going to round that much. But if you know, if you, I have 352.28 and you have 349 or 348 or you might have 354, 355, 
I'll give you a little bit of range on, on your answers. Um, the best way to do that is show your work. If I know what numbers you're using in your problem and how you're rounding, then I'm able to give you um, credit. Again, the process is more important than what the final answer is. So that would be what we call a one-step problem. That's just going from moles to grams. Let's use that molar mass again. I carry the, the givens down. So the other one's sodium bicarbonate uh, and the other one's barium hydroxide. Same type of problem. Sometimes you're going from moles to grams. Sometimes you're going from grams to moles. I encourage you to go back and look at that answer key. Um, and the steps are listed out there. Let's look and see what a two-step problem would look like. So in number nine, my given is grams of magnesium chloride, but now my wanted isn't moles. I'm going to go through moles, and I got to get the particles. So if you think of the mole map with the mole in the middle, and then grams down here. In this case, you're going from grams to moles. That's one step. Once you get to moles, then you change it into particles. And so this is really a two-step process of changing grams to moles. Let's start with our given. 436 grams of MgCl2. Set up our brackets. First step. is grams to moles. I know that I want moles, so what I want goes on top. What I don't need goes in the denominator, which is grams of MgCl2. If you're struggling as to what goes down there, look at what's given. Whatever you're given gives you a hint. It's a clue, it goes down at the bottom. Going back, it's going to be 95.21. That's what we calculated as the molar mass of magnesium chloride back in number three. So we used it in three, and then we used it in six, and now we're using it in nine. Let's make the switch here to our wanted. So I'm going to continue. Oh, I see moles are on top now. So I'm going to need mole in the bottom of the next one. Now, you could have taken an answer for that and plugged it into another problem but I'm just gonna run it here so that it's a two-stepper and we did a practice sheet like this. And that's my, I'm getting rid of that. I don't need it, it goes in the denominator. My wanted is particles of MgCl2. Well, what's the ratio here? I know that here I'm in the first step, I'm weighing them, right? I know that I've got 436 grams and I know that one mole's 95.2 grams, I stop there, I would have moles. And then once I get to moles, now the second step is, I'll use a different color here, moles. No, I tried to use a different color and it popped out yellow, right? Try this. We're going from moles out to particles. So the first step was grams to moles. Now we go moles to particles. Take the two parts, put them together. And this one comes the conversion here is there's 6.02. That's how many, so I'm counting them. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole. Multiply across the top, get an answer. Multiply across the bottom, get an answer. And then divide. And I didn't do that all the way out. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put an answer here. You guys can plug them into your calculator and make sure you get this. Um, the steps right, the order of operations, and when you do the math out on this, you should come out to an answer of 2.76 times 10 to the 24th particles of MgCl2, magnesium chloride. If you're doing this and you have the word particles and you don't have a big exponent or a big number, then you might, might want to go back and check your work on that. Okay, I'll leave number 10 up to you. Um, I will uh, be on Zoom uh, a little bit after school today, Tuesday. Um, I um, have actually have a day off of school tomorrow, um, like you guys. Uh, most teachers are coming in and doing SAT. Um, my wife's having some surgery, so I will be with her, and I will not be um, 
on a Zoom call tomorrow. I know I have office hours normally scheduled for Wednesday. Um, however, if you have questions, I may not be able to answer them live. However, email me and I'd be happy to send you a response. I will be monitoring email throughout the day. There'll be a few hours where I just, I won't um, because I'll be tending to, to home things. Um, but certainly email me uh, with questions. Um, I will also be on at 7 a.m. Thursday morning. I'll be on Zoom, 7 a.m. If you have some questions before you come in and take the test of, of anything, you have questions on here. Um, the, to don't, like, the test is pretty straightforward. What you see on this review is gonna be on the test. If you don't see on this review, it's not gonna be on the test. Um, we just gotta get this under our belts and, uh, and move on from here. Okay, um, study well.